All praise is to the Most High. All praise is to the Lord. Uh, so my tonight's topic is called Understanding Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Understanding Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Okay? Let's open up with the book. Let's open up with the book of John chapter 8, verse 32. John 8, verse 32. Let's start there. Come on. The book of John chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So Christ is teaching us that when we keep God's commandments, get that in Psalms 119, verse 142, let's see what the truth is that will set us free, that will give us understanding this day. Okay? Read that. Psalms 119, verse 142. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Read. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. You see that? Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. So go back to John 8, verse 32. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Come on. And ye shall know the truth, and the mm -hmm. truth shall make you free. We shall know the laws of God, and the laws of God will make us free. You understand? Because as a people, we are mentally destroyed as a race. We have not understanding what the Bible says. We need to get understanding this day and receive the truth. Get that in Psalms 111 and 10. Psalms 111 and verse 10. So we get a better understanding what the Most High God is saying to us. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Come on. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. A good understanding of all they that do his commandments. Come on. His praise endureth forever. You see that? So when we keep God's commandments, when we do the commandments of God, we will receive a good understanding. We must keep God's laws that we may receive a good understanding. Give me that in uh, Sarah chapter 21. Sarah chapter 21, verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 21, verse 11. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, verse 11. Read. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. Come on. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. You see that thing? When we keep God's commandments, we receive understanding. So God's commandments is the gateway, is the key for us to receive understanding. Not just any type of understanding, a good understanding. When we obey God's laws, we humble down to the Bible, we will receive a good understanding. Watch this. Give me now. Give me the book of Galatians 5, verse 21. Galatians, I mean Ephesians, Ephesians 5, verse 21, Ephesians, because I'm looking right at Galatians, Ephesians 5, verse 21, let's read that. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 21. Come on. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Read it again. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 21. Read. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. I've had this scripture multiple times be misused by black Christian women. Black Christian women have, me, have, have, have abused this verse to abuse their husbands in the house. Because I had a sister say she also wants her husband to submit to her because of this verse. Read again, verse 21. The book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Read. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of mm -hmm. God. You see that? So in the Christian church, these wicked, demonic, abominable pastors, they use this verse to say the black man also, the Israelite man, must also submit herself to the black woman. They use this verse right here in the Christian church. Give me the book of Isaiah. Because the Christian church also, they also have preachers that they use, but it's not the right preachers. Why? Because they are not keeping God's laws. Read it. 28 verse 13. The book of Isaiah chapter 28 verse 13. Come on. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. Mm -hmm. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Line upon line, here a little and there a little. Read. That they might go and fall backward. Mm -hmm. And be broken and snared and taken. You see that? It says, even also to them, they use precept upon precept, but what? It says, but they might go, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. 
they're going to fall backwards, meaning what? They are not going to understand what the Bible says, but they're going to have a principle also. You understand? Go back to Ephesians 5, verse 21 again. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 21. Read. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear mm -hmm. of God. So they read this and they say, you see, the husband also must submit themselves to the wife, which is crazy. Okay? Give me that in uh, 2 Peter 3.15. Because this is the problem. Okay? We read it in Isaiah 28 verse 18. But this is what the Apostle Peter said. 2 Peter 3 verse 15. Let's start there. So we're going to go here because the Apostle Peter is going to give us an understanding of how the Apostle Paul wrote his letter. His epistle. Okay? Read. 2nd book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 15. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Mm -hmm. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Read. As also all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. So the apostle Paul, he wrote things hard to be understood when he sent his letter his epistles to various churches. Go ahead. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest. You see that? They that are unlearned in the scriptures, they have precepts, but it's not the right, the right precepts because they are not lining up. Why? Because they are not obeying, humbling down to the laws of God. That's why now they struggle. They are unstable. They wrestle with the understanding of the Bible. Read the letters of Paul, particularly. Go ahead. As they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. As they do also the other scriptures. Because the only other scriptures that was written back then was the Old Testament. And in the Christian churches, we know, they say the Old Testament is done away with. That's what they teach. You understand? So now, they also don't understand what the Old Testament says. Because they don't read it. Because they say it's done away with. That's why. Okay? So the Apostle Peter, he warned us about this thing. But in the Christian church, they always focus on the letters of Paul. Why? Read again verse 15. 16. Verse 16 again. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 16. As also in all his epistles, speaking Wait. in them of these things, mm -hmm. in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest. You see that? They that are unlearned and unstable, they rest. So go ahead as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Unto their own destruction. Destruction that they may fall backward. You understand? That's what Isaiah said. Now, go back to Ephesians now. Ephesians 5, verse 21 again. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 21. Go ahead. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So let's begin to explain, because we need to understand. The apostle Paul Guess what? He was given the, 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 he was given the gospel of the uncircumcision. You understand? The scattered Israelites. That's why the Apostle Paul had to travel to various places to teach the scattered Israelites. You understand? Give me that in Galatians, okay? Give me Galatians 2. Watch this. Give me Galatians 2. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 6. You know what? Give me Galatians 2 verse 7 and 8. Okay? Let's get to the point. Galatians 2 verse 7 and 8. Read that. The book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 7. Mm -hmm. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, mm -hmm. as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. So the apostle Paul was committed the gospel of the circumcision, which is also known as the southern kingdom of Israel, and the, God, the uncircumcision is known as the northern kingdom of Israel, or Gentiles, as they were called. Go ahead. For he that wrote effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, mm -hmm. the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. The same was mighty in the apostle Paul towards the Gentiles. So the Gentiles, the, the apostle Paul was given the gospel of the uncircumcision or the Gentiles as they were called. Also, they are known as the northern kingdom of Israel. Okay, now watch this. Give me the book of Acts, okay? Because for us to understand the letters of Paul, we need to read the book of Acts and understand it, what it says, because we're going to get great details of the Acts of the Apostles, okay? Give me the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 26. Watch this. The book of Acts, 
chapter 11, verse 26. Really? And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. Really? And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. You see that thing? The disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Antioch is in Greece, okay? Antioch is in Greece. The people, they started to call the disciples, the apostles, Christians. The apostles didn't call themselves Christians, but the people started calling the apostles and the disciples of Christ Christians. This is after Christ is gone. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts 14. Acts chapter 14 and verse 19. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 14 verse 19. Read. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, mm -hmm. who persuaded the people, and, have, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. So now the apostle Paul is a certain Jew that came from Antioch and Iconium. These are cities in Greece who persuaded the people. And having stoned Paul, they stoned the apostle Paul, drew him out of the city. They thought he was dead. You understand? Now watch this. Go ahead. How be it? As the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Now, read that again. Read that again. Read that again. The book of Acts chapter 14 verse 20. Read. How be it? As the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Now watch this. Now I'm going to show you the map of the Apostle Paul's journey when he ended up at Ephesus. You understand? Paul journey into different Greek islands, including Ephesus. Okay? Watch this. I'm going to show you something, right? Watch this. Let me share my screen real quick. I'm going to show you Paul's journey. Okay? Now, do you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, all crazy. Now, what you see here is, this is Jerusalem, and then this is Antioch. Now, this is the Paul's journey all the way when he ended up at Ephesus, when he had to teach at Ephesus, okay? So, I want you to keep your eye on the map as we're going to be reading this. Now, read Acts 14, verse 20 again. The book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 20. Read. How be it? Yeah. You know what? Start of 19. Start of 19. I'm going to show you something. Read verse 19 again. The book of Acts chapter 14 verse 19. Go ahead. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium. Mm -hmm. Who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. So now that's Antioch right there. That's Cilicia. That's David. That's Lystra. That's Iconium. That's Antioch. That's another place also called Antioch, which is also part of what? Greece. Okay, so now what you're seeing here, what we're reading here is Paul's journey, you understand? Paul's journey all the way up to Ephesus. But I want to show you something. Hold this. Give me Acts 15, verse 36. Acts 15, verse 36. Okay, so because it says, yeah, read verse 20, read verse 20 now, come on. The book of Acts chapter 14, verse 20. Read. How be it, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose mm -hmm. up. He rose, and he came walked. into the city. He rose up. Remember, they thought he was dead. The apostles surrounded him. You understand? Healed the brother. He rose up. What happened next? Go ahead. And came into the city. Mm -hmm. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to David. He departed with Barnabas to David. That's David right there. Okay. Get Acts 15, verse 36. Acts chapter 15, verse 36. Watch this. Because... What the Apostle Paul was doing, he was traveling to different churches to do what? To confirm the souls of the disciples and make sure that they continue in the faith. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 15, verse 36. Read. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where mm -hmm. we have preached the word of the Lord uh -huh. and see how they do. You see that thing? That's why we do what the way we do it. You understand? You ever notice we keep taking that? Read again verse 36. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 15 verse 36. Read. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, 
let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. You see that thing? Let's go and visit our brethren where we have preached the word of, where we have preached. That means they've been there before to go on, to go and make sure that everything is still running smoothly, to see how they do. The Apostle Paul is with Barnabas. Jump down to verse 14 now. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 15 verse 40. Read. And Paul chose Silas. He took Silas also. He took Silas also. Come on. And departed. Mm -hmm. Being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Go ahead. And he went through Syria and Cilicia. He went through what? And he went through Syria and Cilicia. He went through still. He went through Syria and Cilicia. That's Cilicia right there. So from Antioch, Cilicia through Syria. Okay, go ahead. Confirming the churches. Confirming the churches. So they were confirming the souls of the disciples in all the churches which they preached the gospel for. Chapter 16, verse 1. Watch this. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 1. Read. Then came he to Debbie and Lystria. He did what? Then came he to Debbie and Lystria. Then came he, the apostle Paul, with Barnabas Silas, to what? To Debbie and Lystra. That's Lystra right there. Go ahead. And behold, a certain disciple was there mm -hmm. named Timotheus. Timotheus. Timotheus, that's Timothy. Timothy. The book of Timothy. Yes, this is Timothy. This is Timotheus. Timothy. Read that part again. The book of Acts, chapter 16, this one. Read. Then came he to Debbie and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus. Mm -hmm. The son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess. Read. And believed. But his father was a Greek. But his father was a Greek, meaning what? His father was an Israelite still following Greek customs. You understand? That's why the Apostle Paul said this. Give me the book of Galatians chapter 3 real quick. Okay? So Paul, uh, Timothy's father was an Israelite still following Greek customs. Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. Watch this. The book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. Read. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Mm -hmm. There is neither bond nor free. Read. There is neither male nor female. For mm -hmm. so ye are all one in Christ Jesus. You see that thing? So the Apostle Paul is writing to the children of Israel that was scattered in Galatia. So he's telling them, listen, there is neither Jew nor Greek because there were Jews that still grew up in the, the law of Moses and there were Israelites that grew up under Greek custom. You understand? So he was saying, there's no difference between the Israelites that grew up knowing that they were Jews and Israel that grew up, that they, they grew up knowing they didn't know that they were Jews. Why? Because it was against the laws of the Greeks for them to profess themselves to be Jews. You understand? So they grew up under Greek culture. Give me second mark of the Okay. Second mark of the Chapter 6 and the 6. Second book of Maccabees. Chapter 6, verse 6. Go ahead. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts. Read. Or to, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Or to profess himself at all to be a what? Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So it was against the Greek laws for us to profess ourselves to be Jews. You understand? That's why we our forefathers during the time of the Greeks, the Greeks took away our nationality because it started with them. They started to make it a, a law that if we profess ourselves to be Jews, they put us to death. Read that again, the six. Second book of Maccabees, chapter six, verse six. Read. Neither was it lawful for man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. You see that thing? So it was against the Greeks for us to profess ourselves to be Jews. That's why the Apostle Paul, he understood Greek history and what was going on during the time of the Greeks. That's why, go back to Galatians 3, verse 28. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 28. Mm -hmm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Stop right there. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Why? 
because you had Israelites that grew up under Greek culture. You understand? They conformed, they were forced to conform to Greek customs and laws and traditions. Go back to 2 Maccabees chapter 6. 2 Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 8. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 8. Read. Moreover, they went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the, of the heathen by the suggestion of the Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. You see that thing? So now it was, there was a Greek law by Antiochus that guess what? There was a decree that went out to the neighbor cities of the Greeks that by suggestion of the Ptolemy, against the Israelites during that time, that we should observe the same fashion and be partakers of their sacrifice. Go ahead, verse 9, watch this. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Really? Then might a man have seen the present misery. So what happened, what's happening here is Timothy's father grew up in Greek custom. You understand? And I'm going to show you what he did not teach Timothy. Watch this. Give me first Maccabees 1. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 49. Watch this. Because this is during the time of Antiochus. Okay? Antiochus introduced democracy and all that. Watch this. First Maccabees 1, read verse 49. First book of Maccabees chapter 1, verse 49. Come on. To the end, they might forget the law. You see that? The reason why they made us to conform to their customs and ways is that we might forget our, the laws of God. You understand? Our customs, our culture. Read. And change all the ordinances. And change all the ordinances. Go ahead. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said, he should die. You see what they were doing? They were people, they were putting our people to death. Now jump up to verse 48. I'm going to show you something about Timothy. Read. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 48. Come on. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised. You see that thing? So it was against the Greek law for us to circumcise our children according to the law in Leviticus chapter 12. When a child is born, he said, he's a boy, you must circumcise him the eighth day. It was against the laws of the Greeks. So many of our forefathers under the Greek captivity, they were, they what? We could not circumcise our children. You understand? Read again, verse 48. First book of Maccabees chapter 1, verse 48. Read. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised. Mm -hmm. and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. You see that thing? So we could not circumcise our children. It was against Greek law. Understand that? Now, go back to the book of Acts. Now, Acts chapter 16 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 16 verse 1. Great. Right. Then came he to Debbie and Lystra. Mm -hmm. And behold, a certain disciple was there Named Timotheus, right? the son of a certain woman who was a Jewess. So now the mother, the mother still understood that she was a Jew and she needed to keep the customs of the Jew. Go ahead. And believed. And did what? And believed. So she kept the commandment. Watch this. Go ahead. But his father was a Greek. But his father was a Greek. Because why? His father grew up under Greek customs. Watch this, read on. Which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. So, guess what? Timothy was well reported of the brethren that was where, that was at Lystra with the Apostle Paul. You understand? And where? At what? Iconium. That's Iconium right there. So, the brothers at Iconium and the brothers at Lystra, they gave a good report regarding Timothy. Read on. Him would Paul have to go forth with him mm -hmm. and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters. You see that thing? So the apostle Paul took Timothy under his wing. And guess what? Because Timothy was not circumcised because his father grew up under what? Greek customs. And it was against the laws of the Greeks for us to circumcise our children. That's why Timothy at this time, he was not circumcised. The apostle Paul had to do it. Okay, read again the three. The book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 3. Read. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters. Read. 
For they knew all that his father was a Greek. You see that thing? For they knew all that his father was a Greek. Why? Because they knew that his father was a Greek, meaning an Israelite that grew up under Greek customs, they knew that he did not circumcise his son. You understand? Because it was against the laws of the Greeks. Like we read in First Maccabees 148. Okay, now watch this. Acts chapter 14, verse 20 again. Let's go back there. Well, Acts chapter 14, verse 20. Now the apostle Paul is with who? All Timothy now has joined Silas and Paul. Read. How be it, as the disciples stood round about him, and he rose up, and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to David. He departed with Barnabas to David. Go ahead. And when they had preached the gospel to that city, mm -hmm. and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra, and to Iconium and Antioch. You see that thing? He says they returned again to what? Read those cities again. And they returned again to Lystra mm -hmm. and to Iconium and, and Antioch. You see that? Lystra, Iconium to Antioch now. Now they are here. This Antioch. Okay, go ahead. Confirming the souls of the disciples. You see that? That's the same thing we read in Acts 16. They were confirming the souls of the disciples. Read. And exhorting them to continue in the faith. Mm -hmm. And that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. You see that thing? So they were going to the cities that they preached the gospel before to confirm the souls of the disciples. To continue to teach, apply, you understand, to order the churches according to the laws of God. That's what they were doing. Now give me Acts 20 verse 16. Acts 20 verse 16. Watch this. The book of Acts. Chapter 20, verse 16. Read. Really? For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus. Stop right there. Paul had determined to do what? Remember, they are here at Antioch. Now the apostle Paul is saying, listen, I need to go somewhere else. Now he wants to go to Ephesus. Read. Really? The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 16. Read. Really? For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus. Mm -hmm. Because he would not spend the time in Asia. That's Asia. Asia meaning Asia Minor. This is Asia Minor. That's Macedonia right there. Go ahead. That's Bithynia, Galatia. These are the cities that you read about when you read the book of Acts and the letters of Paul. Read. For he hasted, if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. Because he was what? He wanted to go and observe the day of Pentecost. He wanted to go to Ephesus and from there go back to Jerusalem to observe the feast of Pentecost. Okay. Give me Acts chapter 19 verse 1. Watch this. He wanted to go to Ephesus, to sail to Ephesus. Watch this, Acts 19, verse 1. Read that. The book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 1. Read. And it came to pass mm -hmm. that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. He did what? Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. He came to Ephesus. Go ahead. And finding certain disciples. He found certain disciples. Now the Apostle Paul, where is he at? He's at Ephesus at this time. Remember, the Apostle Paul in Acts 18 he was in Corinth. Okay. Now, guess where? In Corinth, he left two. He, he left two, he left Apollos. Apollos is over there. You understand? Now the Apostle Paul, okay, where is he at now? At Ephesus. The Apostle Paul came over here. He's here now. Okay. Read this one again. The book of Acts chapter 19, verse 1. Read. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. Mm -hmm. And finding certain disciples. And finding certain disciples. Give me Acts 18, verse 18. Acts chapter 18, verse 18. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 18. Read. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while. Read. And then took his leave of the brethren and sailed thence into Syria. Mm -hmm. And with him Priscilla and Aquila. He took Priscilla and Aquila, come on. Having shown his head in Centria. Thank you, come on. For he had a vow. He had a vow of the Nazarite upon him. So he shaved his, he shaved his head. He didn't make cheese cock on his head, but he shaved his head, you understand, to vow the vow of the Nazarite. Go ahead. And he came to Ephesus he and what? left them there. 
And he what? And he came to what? And he came to Ephesus and, and left him there. Ephesus. He came to Ephesus. He came to Ephesus. That's what you are seeing there. You understand? So I'm showing you the, the journeys of the Apostle Paul with the disciples. You understand? With the brothers that were teaching the gospel with him. He was going to different places and returning back to go and visit them again to see if they are still continuing in the faith. Okay? Read that again. Verse 18. Verse 19. The book of Acts of the 18, verse 19. Read. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. Mm -hmm. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. You see what the Apostle Paul was about the work. You understand? He was about, he was about uh, the, the love of neighbor, the love of neighbors, the unity of the brethren. But guess what he also did? He went into the synagogue. He reasoned with the Jews according to the scripture. You understand? The Apostle Paul was about the work. Okay? Jump down to verse... Read verse 20. Read verse 20. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 18 verse 20. Read. When they desired him to tarry a longer time with them, he consented not. So, with the, because when he was with the Jews out of the scriptures, get that in Acts 17. Acts chapter 17 verse 1 and 2. I'm going to show you when we went to the church of Thessalonica, this is what he did when he arrived there. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 17, verse 1. Read. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, mm -hmm. they came to Thessalonica. Where was the synagogue of the Jews? Where was the synagogue of the Jews? Come on. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. We see that he reasoned with them out of the scriptures. The same way he reasoned with the Jews in the synagogue out of the scriptures in Thessalonica, he did the same when he came to Ephesus. So go back to Acts 18. Read verse 20 again. Read verse 19 and 20 together. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 19. Uh -huh. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. Read. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Mm -hmm. He reasoned with the Jews out of the scriptures at Ephesus. Come on. When they desired him to tell long a time with them, he consented mm -hmm. not. They wanted him to stay long. He said, no, I'm not going to stay long. Go ahead. Read. But bade them farewell, mm -hmm. saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem. That cometh in Jerusalem. Come on. But I will return again unto you, if God will. If the Lord will. Read. And he sailed from Ephesus. He did what? And he sailed from Ephesus. So he says he sailed from Ephesus. So he left Ephesus. Okay. He left Ephesus. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. This day. Now, when the apostle Paul was not at Ephesus, with the church at Ephesus, what did he do? Because he was not with them. When he was with them, he lived with them out of the scripture. But when he was not there, here's what the apostle Paul had to do. Give me the book of Ephesians 1 and 1. Ephesians 1, verse 1. I'm taking you through the journey why the Apostle Paul, when he was journeying to different churches, you understand, in the Greek islands where people were scattered, when he was not there, this is what he had to do. That's why now we are now going to read the letter to the church that was at Ephesus because he wasn't there himself to reason with them out of the scriptures. So he wrote, he wrote letters to them. Read that, Ephesians 1 and 1. Come on. The book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, mm -hmm. to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to show you something. You see what he's saying here? You see what he's calling um, the church that was at Ephesus? He's calling them the saints. I'm going to show you something. All this. Go back to Acts. Go back to Acts chapter 18. I'm going to show you something. Acts chapter 18. Okay. Acts chapter 18. Read verse 19. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 19. Read. He came to Ephesus and mm. left him there. Read. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Who did he reason with in the synagogue? And reasoned with the Jews. So the apostle Paul reasoned with the Jews in the synagogue. So who was the, who was the Ephesians? The Jews. The Ephesians was the Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel. Read again verse 19. The book of Acts chapter 18 verse 19. 
Rain. And he came to Ephesus and left him there. Mm. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. You see that thing? So at Ephesus, the Jews that were scattered at Ephesus, which in the book of Ephesians, the letter to the church at Ephesus is calling them the saints. Go back to Ephesians 1 and 1. The book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. Go ahead. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, mm -hmm. to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faith in Christ Jesus. You see that thing? So he's saying, he's writing a letter to the saints which are at Ephesus. The Jews that were at Ephesus, they are the apostle Paul risen with in the synagogue. Give me Psalms 148 verse 14. Why is he calling them saints that was at Ephesus? Okay, read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 148, verse 14. Read. He also exalted the horn of his people. Mm -hmm. The praise of all his saints. Read. Even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. You see that? Praise ye the Lord. So the saints is the children of Israel. So the Apostle Paul is writing to the children of Israel that was scattered at Ephesus. Okay, go back to Ephesians 1 and 1. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Paul, an apostle of, of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Read. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So this is another precept you can use when people are all our, our brothers and sisters on the street, they are always asking, so is Jesus Christ and God the same? You can read verse 3. Read verse 3 again. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? Blessed be God. Be blessed be the God and the and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You understand? So it's letting you know the most that God is the Father of Jesus, the Christ, the Black Messiah. Okay? Now, give me the book of Ephesians 5 and 21 now. Now we know who the, the Ephesians are. The, the children of, is, is the Jews that were scattered at Ephesus that the Apostle Paul had to write to. Why? Because he was not there physically. But when he was dead, he reasoned with them out of the scripture. You men understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now give me Ephesians 5, verse 21. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 21. Read. Submitting yourselves one to another in the mm -hmm. fear of God. So now he's telling the church at Ephesus to submit themselves one to another in the fear of God. So what is he explaining here? Because chapter 5, verse 1 through 20 is, a, is, is setting order in the church because why? There were problems in the congregation. The congregation was not in order. So the Apostle Paul was setting the church in order. I'm going to show you something. Give me the book of Ephesians 4 verse 3. Ephesians 4 verse 3. Watch this. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Endeavoring, endeavoring, meaning fight to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Because obviously there was no unity in the church. There was problems in the church. There was division in the church. You understand? So the church was out of order. The apostle Paul had to tell the leaders over there to say, listen, you need to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Meaning what? Set the church in order according to the scriptures. Read again verse 3. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 3. Read. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the, of the spirit in the bond of peace. So because there was division in the churches, this is, this is what was the problem in the church. Read verse 14. Watch this. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 14. You know what? Read verse 13. I'm going to show you something. Read verse 14. Come on. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 13. So we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Okay, Ephesians 4 verse 13. Okay, because I'm going to show you something. There was a problem in the church. 
And the Apostle Paul had to tell the church at Ephesus to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. To what? To restore peace in the congregation in an orderly fashion according to the law. Verse 13 again, watch this. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 13. Read. So we all come in the unity of the faith mm -hmm. and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Read. And to a perfect man mm -hmm. and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So now he's still teaching them unity. Is that still we all come in the unity of the faith. Now, because there was problems in the church, they did not understand order and structure and chain of command. You understand? Jump up to verse 11. Watch this. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 11. Read. And he gave some apostles uh -huh. and some gave, prophets. So, so he gave some apostles in the congregation. Read. And some prophets. And some are prophets, meaning they can prophesy. Go ahead. And some evangelists. And some evangelists, they travel to teach the gospel. Go ahead. And some pastors and teachers. And some pastors and teachers. But there was confusion in the church. You understand? There was confusion. Who are the apostles? Who are the prophets? The evangelists? Pastors and teachers. You understand? The chain of command was not understood. The apostle Paul had to remind them. Okay? Jump down to verse 14 now. Because, because there was confusion. This is what was taking place. Read. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14. Come on. That we henceforth be no more children. Mm -hmm. Tossed to and fro. And carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness. Whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You see what was going on in the church of Ephesus? They were, they, guess what? The, the congregation was being tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. They were all over the place. You understand? Today, they are all over YouTube. Okay? Window shopping and things like that. Carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. And cunning craftiness whereby they lie in way to deceive. Catching different doctrines, trying to bring them into the congregation. Acting a fool, breaking the chain of command in the congregation. That's what was going on in the church of Ephesus. You understand? Spirits, demonic activity, breaking the chain of command, bringing doctrine that will contrary to what we have learned. Read again verse 14. Come on. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 14. Mm -hmm. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, mm -hmm. and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So it says, by every wind of doctrine. I'm going to show you the doctrines that were being taught in the church of Ephesus. Give me the book of Acts chapter 19 verse 1. Let's go back. Acts 19 verse 1. Let me show you what was going on in the church of Ephesus. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 19 verse 1. Read. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples Jump down to verse 8. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 19 is 8. Mm -hmm. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months. Stop right there. You see, you see that thing? We just did that in Shabbat. Read that thing again, verse 8. Come on, come on. The book of Acts chapter 19 is 8. Read. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months. For the space of three months, we were over there. And they tried to shoot us, to set us on fire, okay, for the space of three months. What were we doing over there, Shabdi? Come on. Disputing and persuading. What were we, doing? we were disputing, disputing and persuading. Disputing and persuading. Come on. Disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. That's what we were doing over there. And some got mad, some got glad. You understand? Go ahead. Wait, okay, hold on. So read verse 9 again, read it right, but when diverse, meaning diverse, meaning the multitude of people, though they were hardened, they believed not what was being taught. Read that again, verse 9. The book of Acts chapter 19, verse 9. Read. Right. But when diverse were hardened and believed not, mm -hmm. but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them. He did what? 
he departed from them. Mm. Go ahead. And separated the disciples. Go ahead. Disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. You see what he did? He says, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. Go ahead. And this continued by the space of two years. Mm, hold on. So he, there was three years, there was three months, and then he continued on for the space of two years. Guess what? This is going to happen, brother. Some of you are going to be sent to different locations. You're going to have to spend two years over there disputing and persuading them concerning the kingdom of God. Okay, go ahead. Come on. So that all which dwell in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Both Jews and Greeks, meaning Israelites that grew up in, in the, the law of Moses and the Israelites that grew up in Greek custom. Go ahead. And God wrote special miracles by the hands of Paul. He wrote special miracles by the hand of the Apostle Paul. Because why? He was disputing and persuading them regarding things concerning the kingdom of God. Meaning repentance or repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jump down to verse 13. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 19 verse 13. Great. Right. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, mm -hmm. took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. You, you see that thing? So now you had some Israelites that had evil spirits upon them. So was, there was demonic activity happening at the church of Ephesus. Go ahead. And there were seven sons of one Siva, a Jew, and chief of the priests which did so. Really? And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. Mm -hmm. And Paul, I know. But mm -hmm. who are ye? You see what the, the evil spirit is asking, Siva. It says, listen, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? I don't know you. Go ahead. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. You see what was going, you see what the evil spirits are able to do to make people do? Naked and wounded. Now, because now you're all over the place, naked and wounded, eating walls, falling and all that. Go ahead. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks, also dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all. Mm -hmm. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And Christ's name was magnified. Go ahead, watch this, read. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. They showed their deeds, read. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and curious burned art. them. So curious arts means witchcraft, books about witchcraft. So uh, there was demonic activity happening at Ephesus, you understand? And there was witchcraft happening at Ephesus. Go ahead. Brought their books together and burned them before all men. Mm -hmm. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of, of silver. You see what they did? So what the Apostle Paul was doing what, and them was doing at Ephesus, this is what they had to deal with. They were there for three months and then they, could, they continued again for two years. You understand? Disputing and persuading them daily. You understand? So that they can convince them to repent and return back to the Messiah. Okay? Jump down to verse 24. This was the issue that was happening at the church of Ephesus. Read verse 24. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 19 is 24. Read. Right. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, mm -hmm. brought no small gain into the craftsmen. Unto the craftsmen. So Demetrius, he was a silversmith. He, his business, he was in the business of making shrines for Diana. You understand? Diana of the Ephesians. That's what he did. He made money out of it. You understand? He made the statues and shrines for, of Diana for people to take, to buy, and put them in their houses to worship. You understand? So this was another problem that was happening in Ephesus. The doctrine that was happening in Ephesus, you know, tossing people to and fro, was the worshipping of the women. This is what was going on at Ephesus. Read again verse 24. The book of Acts of the 19 is 24. Read. Really? For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, 
brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. He brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. Okay, go ahead. Whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, mm -hmm. Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. You see that thing? He says, listen, sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. You understand? We, this is how we're getting our wealth. We're making money out of this thing. Go ahead. Moreover, you see in here that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all, all, all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be not gods, which are made with hands. You see what he's saying? So now they realize that the Apostle Paul is teaching against this thing. He's teaching against idolatry. Because there was idolatry taking place in Ephesus, worshipping of the woman. You understand? Read. So that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set in at naught. Their business is in danger to be set at nothing. Go ahead. But also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised. Then the, the apostle Paul is teaching that the, the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised. You know what the temple of the great goddess Diana is today? The Christian church. The Christian church is the temple of the great goddess Diana. Because in the Christian church, they teach the black man to worship the black woman. You understand? Feminism. Read. And her magnificence should be destroyed. The Apostle Paul was teaching that Diana's magnificence must be destroyed. There should be no bonds that should be worshipped. Read. Whom all Asia and the world worshipped. You see that thing? Whom all Asia and the world worshipped. Read. And when they heard these, these sayings, they were full of wrath and mm. cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. What did they say? Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Let me share my screen. I'm going to show you Diana of the Ephesians. Okay. There's the greatest Diana of the Ephesians. Let me share my screen so you can see the great goddess Diana, whom the world worships today. You see my screen, right? Yes, sir. That's the great goddess Diana. That demon right there, okay? Semiramis. The great goddess Diana. Inanna. That's her right there. You see what she's got? She's wearing a Greek toga and her breasts are showing. That's why today the black woman, you see how she dresses? She dresses because she worships this woman right here. Diana. To show her the cleavage and all that. That's what you are seeing here. This is her. You see how many breasts she's got? That's how our sisters dress, be dressing today. They dress like this. This is how they dress. Greek togas with cleavage showing. I'm going to show you how it looks today. Now, you see that? Look at that. This is a Greek toga. Okay? Look at that. Watch this. Now, I think there's a picture of one of them there. You see, in front of Air Magazine, Kevin Klein, what is it? Kelvin Klein, Kelvin Klein, whatever they call it. Look at that. That's a Greek toga. This is a Greek toga. You see the boob is sticking out? Uh-huh. Greek toga. Barnogi fashion. Right there. You see how they dress? It's all Greek customs. You understand? This is all Greek customs and culture. Now look at the black woman. This is the black woman with her man. You see how she's dressed? The great goddess Diana, whom the world worshipped, especially our people, our sisters. Look at them. You see how she's dressed? Here's another picture. The brother don't see nothing. You see how they are dressed, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, they are worshipping the great goddess Diana. Okay? Read that again. Acts chapter 19, verse 28. The book of Acts chapter 19, verse 28. Read. Really? And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Mm -hmm. Great is the, is, is the great is Diana of the Ephesians. So what was going on in the church of Ephesus? Demonic activity, witchcraft, idolatry, worshipping of the woman. This is what was going on in the church of Ephesus. 
That's why the Apostle Paul, yeah, he said what he said in Ephesians. Go back to Ephesians 5 and 21. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and 21. Come on. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So now he's telling the churches to do what? To, he's telling the leaders of the church at Ephesus to set the house in order. That's what he's telling them. Set your house in order. All things be done decently and in order. That's what he was telling them. Okay, watch this. Give me First Timothy. Okay. You know what? Yes. Give me First Timothy. Um, First Timothy. Chapter 1. First Timothy. Because what's happening is that, they, remember, the Apostle Paul was joined by Timothy in Acts chapter 16. The Apostle Paul is with Timothy. But this is what he's going to tell Timothy. He is writing to Timothy to tell him this. First Timothy 1 and 1. Watch this. First book of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, mm -hmm. and to Timothy, my own son in the faith, Ray? grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Go ahead. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus. You see what he's telling him? He says, listen, I beseech you to abide still at Ephesus. Remember, we read the problems at Ephesus. Okay, he says, listen, I want you to abide still at Ephesus. Go ahead. When I went into Macedonia. You went into Macedonia. Hold on. He says, listen, I'm going to Macedonia. I want you to abide still at Ephesus. Read. That thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Hold on. He says, you might what? He says, charge some of the leaders over there that they teach no other doctrine. What was the doctrine that was being taught? There were, guess what? The black woman was being worshipped. Witchcraft was perpetrating in that church. There was demonic activity, evil spirits going on in the church. There was disorder in the church of Ephesus. You understand? Jump down to verse 8. Watch this. First book of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But we know that the law is good if a man uses it lawfully. So the leaders of the church of Ephesus, they were not using the laws of God lawfully. You understand? They were cutting corners. Go ahead. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, mm -hmm. but for the lawless and disobedient. Right? For the ungodly and for the sinners. Mm -hmm. For unholy and profane. Right. For murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. For manslayers. So now he's telling him, listen, they must teach not any other doctrine than the one that the Apostle Paul taught him and the one that he taught while he was with Paul at Ephesus. There must not any other doctrine be taught. You understand? He says, listen, make sure you teach the law. The ordinances as I deliver them to you. Go ahead. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. Mm -hmm. Homosexual, wait. For man stealers. There was kidnapping going on. Go ahead. For liars. There were liars, read. For perjured persons. Those that were swearing falsely, come on. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. You see that thing? It says, if there be any other thing that I have not mentioned here that is contrary to sound doctrine, make sure that you shut it down. And the leaders over there, they must not teach any other doctrine that you have not been taught. You understand? Get, go back to Acts. Because remember, there was disorder in the church of Ephesus. Okay? Acts 18, verse 19 through 21 again. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. Really? But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Mm -hmm. When they desired him to, tell, to tarry long a time with them, he consented none. Really? But bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem. But I will return again unto you, if God will. Mm -hmm. And he sailed from Ephesus. He sailed from Ephesus. So when he was not at Ephesus, he wrote letters to them. He wrote letters to Timothy because Timothy was at Ephesus as the Apostle Paul commanded. He said, listen, abide at Ephesus and teach us and make sure they teach not any other doctrine. And he went into specifics 
You understand? It says, if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, make sure you shut it down. Watch this now. Give me Ephesians 5 and 1. Ephesians 5, verse 1. Come on. Go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Read. Be therefore followers of God as dear children. You see what he's commanding the church at Ephesus? Because there was problems in the church. He says, be you followers of God as dear children. Meaning what? Humble yourself to the laws of God as a congregation. Keep the commandments. He's addressing the congregation. Because when we were in Acts 19, he was still addressing the congregation. Okay? Read. And walk in love. And do what? And walk in love. And walk in love. Hold that. Give me that in 1 John 5 and 3. Let's see what love is. And walk in love. Come on. First book of John chapter 5 is 3. Uh -huh. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. You see that thing? So when he's telling them walk in love, he said keep the commandments as a congregation, as dear children. So go back. Go back to Ephesians 5. Let's see again. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 2. Right. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us mm -hmm. and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for his sweet smelling savior. So, what is he telling the church at Ephesus? This is what he's telling because he said, Listen, Christ, he, he walked in love, he kept the commandments, you understand? And he, that's how he loved us when he died. And give it himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling sake. Watch this. Give me that in Romans 12, verse 1. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Read. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. You see that? Oh. It says we must present our bodies a living sacrifice. That's the same thing. Now, that's what Christ did. He says, guess what? Because we follow Christ, we must do the same thing. We present our bodies a living sacrifice. Go ahead. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You see what he's saying? So he's saying we must follow after Christ's footsteps. Go back. Ephesians 5. Now read verse 3. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3. Mm -hmm. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be once named among you as become its saints. You see what he's telling them? So he's telling them to do what? To repent. There must not be fornication in the church. There must not be uncleanness, covetousness. You understand? He says it must not be named among you. So what is he telling them? He's telling them to repent. Just like he told the, the Timothy, he said, listen, make sure that they teach no any other doctrine. There must not be homongers in the church. You understand? That's what he's telling them. There must not be murderers of mothers, men, sayers, Matters of fathers, liars, perjured persons, men stealers, those that are practicing homosexuality, he says there must not be any of that. So in Timothy is giving him some details. Here he's just saying fornication, which falls under adultery. Okay, go ahead. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, mm -hmm. nor jesting, no which what? are not convenient. No jesting. No jesting. Let's see the definition of jesting. Okay, jesting. Now read that jesting. The definition of jesting. Mm -hmm. Adjective, jesting, said or done for amusement, joking. So now the apostle Paul is not saying there must not be. You must not laugh as as brothers and sisters coming together. He's saying, listen, you must know when to to laugh. Know when to be serious and all that. You must cannot be just be goofy all the time. Nobody gonna take you serious. Okay, watch this. Give me that in um, it is just the and one. Some of you are talking about this thing. Everything is just a joke. Mm -mm. You must know the time. Everything must not be just a joke all the time. Watch this. It is just this chapter three, three verse one. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter three, verse one. Go ahead. To everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under heaven. Come on. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up. Mm -hmm. That which is planted. Verse 4. Verse 4. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. You see that? 
He says, there's a time when you weep, there's a time when you laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. All of these are not done all the same time, all the time, all the time. That's what he's saying. There must be some seriousness, okay? We must be serious. There must be time when there's seriousness, there's not a laughing matter at all. You understand? And when that happens, they say, okay, no, you popped off. Guess what? You have to have that in you, okay? That's what we are called. Guess what? What was going on in the church of Ephesus, they were just joking, just joking all the time. They were not serious about the laws of God. You understand? That's why the Apostle Paul had to address it. Go back to Ephesians 5. Read verse 4 again. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 4. Read. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking mm -hmm. but jesting which are not convenient but rather giving of thanks. Giving praises to the Lord. Go ahead. For this ye know that no whoremonger, no unclean person no covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. You see what he's telling them? That's the same thing he told Timothy. Go ahead. Let no man deceive you with vain words. You see that? Let no man deceive you with vain words. Because there was a lot of deception in the church. Go ahead. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. You see that thing? He says, because of these things that he's mentioned, that was taking place in the church of Ephesus. He says, the wrath of God will come upon them. Read. Be not, be not ye therefore partakers with them. He says, don't partake with them in these things. That means what? You must kick them out of the church. Go ahead. For ye were sometimes darkness. Mm -hmm. But now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. He says, we must walk as children of light. He says, because sometimes we were in sin. But now are you light in the law? Walk as children of light, meaning keep the commandments. Read. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Read. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Proving what is acceptable unto the law. What is acceptable unto the law? Get that in Isaiah 41. I'm sorry, Isaiah 42, 21. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 21. Go ahead. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Mm -hmm. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. The Lord is well pleased when we do his righteousness. The Lord is well pleased. That's, that's how, that, this is what is acceptable in the sight of the law. He is pleased when we do his righteousness. When we keep his laws, the Lord is pleased. That's when we become acceptable in his sight. So go back to Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11. For of Ephesians of the five is living. Mm -hmm. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. You see what he's saying? He says, don't fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. What are those unfruitful works of darkness? Jump up to verse 3. The book of Ephesians of the five is three. Mm -hmm. But fornication and all uncleanness, or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become saints. So fornication and cleanness, covetousness. Go ahead. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting. Go ahead. Which are, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Come on, read verse, verse 5. For this you know, that no homanga, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Now jump down to verse 8. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 is 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, yeah, but what? now, for ye were sometimes darkness. He says, for because ye were sometimes darkness. That's the unfruitful works of darkness. From verse 3 to verse 5, he's explaining the unfruitful works of darkness, which is what, what we read. Go ahead. But now, Ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. You see what he's saying? He says, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as the children of light. Get that in Proverbs 6, verse 23. He says, walk in the light of the Lord. What is the light of the Lord? Read that in Proverbs 6, verse 23. For Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Come on. For the commandment is a lamp, mm -hmm. and the law is light. Read. And reproofs of instruction 
other way of life. You see that? And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Give me Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8 and verse 16. Read that. The book of Luke chapter 8 verse 16. Come on. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick. That's the menorah. Read. That they which enter in may see the light. You see, that they that enter into the congregation may see the light. You understand? So, because what? The candlestick, the candlestick making reference to the menorah which gives light, which is the laws of God. Go ahead. That's it on that. That's it on that. Go back to where he was at. We're going to come back to Luke 8. Ephesians chapter 5. Read verse, read verse 11 again. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 is 11. Come on. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but, reprove, but rather reprove them. But he says rather reprove them, meaning correct them. Don't partake. Correct the unfruitful works of darkness, meaning of sin. Read for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. You see that thing? It, says, it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done in secret. Watch this. Go back to Luke 8. Read verse 17 now. The book of Luke chapter 8 verse 17. Mm -hmm. For nothing is secret. You see that? For nothing is secret. Come on. That shall not be made manifest. That shall not be made manifest. So those things that are done in secret will be made in manifest, will be made manifest. Why? Because the laws of God will bring them out. Come on. Neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. You see that thing? Anything that is hid will come, will be known and come abroad. Go ahead. Take heed, therefore, how you hear. Mm -hmm. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. To whosoever had understanding, to him shall be given more understanding. Come on. And whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. Meaning whosoever has not, meaning what? They don't want to keep God's law. Whatever little understanding they've got, they take it for granted. They don't study to improve and increase themselves. They don't apply. The law says, I'm going to take that understanding from you. Okay? Go back. Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Read verse 13. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 is 13. Mm -hmm. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. You see that thing? All things are reproved. To reprove means to correct. All things that are corrected, they will be made manifest by the light, which is the laws of God. So when we bring out the laws of God, we bring correction, we bring them to light. Why? So that brothers and sisters can repent. Okay, go ahead. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. You see that thing? Whatsoever does make manifest is light. The laws of God. Go ahead. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. You see that thing? He says, Awake you that sleeping, and Christ will give you light. Give me that in, um, give me that in Romans. No, no, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. He says, Those that, those that are sleeping, he says, what? You must arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Read that. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 34. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 34. Mm -hmm. Awake to righteousness and sin you not. What? Awake to righteousness and sin not. He says, awake to righteousness and sin not. Awake to righteousness. What is righteousness? Get that? Luke chapter 1, verse 6. Awake to righteousness and sin not. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 6. Come on. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Read again. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 6. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. You see that thing? So the Apostle Paul, when he's telling us, Awake to righteousness, meaning awake and keep God's law. Awake to the laws of God, and Christ will give you light. Go back. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 34. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 34. Read. Awake to righteousness, 
mm-hmm. and sin not. Don't break God's law. Wait. For some have not the knowledge of God, but I speak this to your shame. Some have not the laws of God, and it's a shameful thing. Go back to Ephesians 5. Read verse 14 one more again. The book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Mm-hmm. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Wait. Verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Because the Lord will give us what wisdom. Jump down to verse 18 now. Watch this. The book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Come on. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So what was going on in the church of Ephesus? They were drunkards. They were drunkards in the church of Ephesus. Do you understand? Read that again, verse 18. The book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Mm-hmm. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. You see that thing? He says, don't be drunk with wine, wherein is excess but be filled with the spirit. There was, problem with, there was a problem with drinking. There was a problem with alcohol in the church of Ephesus. Give me that in Sirach. Sirach chapter 31 verse 27. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 31 verse 27. Mm-hmm. Wine is as good as life to a man if it be drunk moderate. So now, but in Ephesus, it was not be drunk in moderation. It was it is what was being drunken with excess. The apostle Paul had to address that as well. Read. What life is then to a man that is without wine? Mm-hmm. For it was made to make men glad. It was made to make men glad. Go ahead. Wine measurably drunk and in season bringeth gladness to the heart. You see that thing? Wine measurably drunk and in season. Bring a gladness of the heart. It must be drunk measurably and in season. Go ahead. And cheerfulness of the mind. And cheerfulness of the mind. Come on, watch this. Read. But wine drunken with excess maketh bitterness of the mind. You see that? Wine drinking with excess maketh bitterness of the mind. It angers people. You understand? You find yourself offending people for no for what? For foolishness. Because why? Wine now or alcohol is controlling you. You don't know how to act. You don't know how to behave yourself about around the people as soon as alcohol enters into your mouth. Go ahead. With brawling and quarreling. Brawling, that goes into fighting people when you get drunk. Rage. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool till you offend. You see that thing? Until you offend. He offends others that are not drunk because he assumes that everybody's drunk or he grows beer muscle. Go ahead. It diminishes strength and maketh wounds. You see that? It diminishes strength and maketh wounds. That's why when that campaign of Arrive Alive, it says don't don't drink and drive and all that. Yeah, he says it diminishes strength. When you drink and when you, you drink and you drive, your concentration is what? It's below 60%. You understand? So that's why and it makes it wounds. Some people get put to death because why? They were drinking and driving. Many people got put to death. You see what happens over the weekend, during Easter, during holidays, long weekends and all that. Our people die on the road. Why? Because of wine. You understand? So go back to where was that? Ephesians 5. Read verse 18 again. Go to Ephesians chapter 5 is 18. And be not drunk with wine where in his excess, mm-hmm. but be filled with the Spirit. Jump down to verse 20. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 is 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So now what I'm showing you is the Apostle Paul is addressing the church. There was problems in the churches. There was a problem in the church of Ephesus. So what we read here is addressing the congregation that there must be order in the church. Watch this. Give me the book of First Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. First Timothy 3, verse 1. Remember, Timothy is now dealing with the church that was Ephesus, okay? Watch this, because there was disorder in the church. So now he's teaching Timothy to set things in order. Before you get there, give me 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Watch this. First book of Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Mm-hmm. Let all things be done decently and in order. 
Let all things be done decently and in order. You understand? Now, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. First book of Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Come on. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. So now, why the apostle, why, why is why is the apostle Paul writing to Timothy to address the church that was in Ephesus regarding this thing? Watch this. Hold this. Give me Ephesians 4. Go back to Ephesians. We're going to read chapter 4. We're going to read verse 11. Watch this. Because there were problems in the churches. The people did not did not understand nor respect the chain of command because there was wicked as hell. Read that. Ephesians 4. Read verse 11. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Come on. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Go ahead. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You see that thing? For the edifying of the nation of Israel, which is the body of Christ. But in the church of Ephesus, they did not understand the chain of command, the leadership. They did not reverence the leadership. You understand? So now the apostle Paul is telling Timothy, listen, set that church in order based on these guidelines. Okay, go back. First Timothy 3 verse 1. Because Negroes were confused. Okay, read it. First book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. Come on. This is a true saying. If a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. He desires a good work. Read. A bishop then must be blameless. Mm. The husband of one wife. Come on. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior. Given to hospitality, apt to teach. So you see, all these things that he's mentioning here, these are things that were lacking in the church of Ephesus. Some were getting drunk, you understand? They were not blameless. They were not keeping God's common. They were not vigilant. They were not sober. They were just poor. You understand? Read again verse 2. Because the bishop is a leader. Okay, come on. First book of Timothy chapter 3 verse 2. Read. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Come on, meaning have the aptitude to teach, given to hospitality. Okay, go ahead. Not given to wine. You see that thing? Not given to wine. Because in the church of Ephesus, those that were apostles, teachers, and all that, they were given to wine. Okay, so was the congregation. Go ahead. No striker. No striker, not be punching people in the face. Read. Not greedy or filthy lucre. They were not greedy or filthy lucre. They were not doing this for the money. Go ahead. But patient. That's one of the fruit of the spirit. Go ahead. Not a brawler. Like him to fight. Read. Not covetous. Not covetous. Come on. One that ruleth well his own house. You see that thing? One that ruleth well his own house. Why? Because this was not done in the church of Ephesus. Hence why the apostle Paul is writing to Timothy to address this. Read with the leaders of the church of Ephesus. Come on. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. You see that thing? The children also being in order. You understand? Go ahead. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? You see that part right there? If a man know not how to rule his own house, because what is he saying? The church of Ephesus, the men did not know how to rule their own house. That means the woman was being what? The woman was being worshipped in the house and in the church. That's why the church was out of order. The houses of those men was out of order because they did not know how to tell their wife to shut the hell up and stop running their mouth. To tell the women to come, come to church wearing Greek togas. Because that was the dress code back then. You understand? That is what was going on. They did not know how to rule their own houses. Read that again. First book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 5. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Read that. First Timothy 3, verse 5. <laughs> First book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 5. Go ahead. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? 
You see that thing? If a man or knows how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? That's why the church of God was not well taken care of. Why? Because the leaders did not know how to rule their own houses, to tell, to check, to get to check their wives, to be in order, to make sure that their children are in order, in all subjection, with all gravity. Now the church also was out of order. Watch this. Give me the book of Esther, chapter 1, the last verse. Esther, chapter 1, verse 22. Watch this. Come on. The book of Esther, chapter 1, verse 22. Read. For he sent letters into all the king's provinces, into every province according to the writing thereof, mm -hmm. and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house. Read that part again. Read that part again. That what? That every man should bear rule in his own house. That's right, right there. Every, that every man should bear rule in his own household. Listen, black men, don't be afraid to tell your wife that, listen, I'm the one that's running the house. Don't be afraid to tell your wife you're the head of the house. She must understand the order as it is written. I know some sisters are mad right now. I don't give a damn. Okay, we don't want to, we are not going to be like the church of Ephesus. Okay, we will not be like the church of Ephesus. Get that in Genesis 18, verse 18. Read that Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. There will not be no feminist movement in the church. Read what you got. The book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 18. Come on, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, mm -hmm. and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. In him. Go ahead. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. You see that thing? So that's what we read in Esther. That's what we read in First Timothy 3. Because that was not going on in the church. So there was no chain of command. There was no submission. There was rebellion in the houses of those men and in the churches as well. Read again verse 19. The book of Genesis chapter 18 verse 19. Come on. So I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. Mm -hmm. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. You see that thing? So our forefather Abraham, he set his house in order. That's the, that's the example that we all need to follow. Because during in the church of Ephesus, they did not understand that. That's why the whole church was out of order. That's why the Apostle Paul had to set them in order, had to tell them to stop worshipping the woman, had to tell Timothy to also tell them to do the same. Because guess what? Go back to 1 Timothy 3 verse 5 again. First book of Timothy, chapter 3 verse 5. Uh -huh. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, mm -hmm. how shall he take care of the church of God? You see that thing? If he does not know how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Because why? Because the man must set his house in order. He must set his spiritual house in order and he must set his physical house in order. The wife and the children. So what was going on in the church of Corinth, the women, there was the, the, the women were being worshipped. That means the black woman was being called a god. The black woman was being called a queen. Oh, hell no. We're not going to call you no queen. You understand? A queen, guess what? Guess what a queen is? A queen gets married to a king. And a queen get, is married. You understand? But we're not going to call nobody a queen. No, we are a princess. Understand that thing. Okay, watch this. Because what was going on in the church of Corinth, black women came into the church wearing Greek togas because they were being worshipped like what? Like Diana. Because that's who they worship. Okay, watch this. Give me First Timothy 2 verse 9. Watch this thing. Read that. First book of Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. Uh-huh. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Stop right there. So that what was going on in the church of Ephesus? Women did not adorn themselves in modest apparel. Women were coming to the church wearing mini skirts and cleavage out. That's what was seen today in the Christian church. You understand? The, the temple of the great goddess Diana, which is the Christian church today. They came into the church dressed like this. Let me show my let me share my screen once again. Black women came into church wearing like this. This is how they dressed coming to church. Talk about Jesus is in my heart. You see that? They came to church dressed like this. Okay. 
wearing Greek toga, worshiping this demon right here, the great goddess Diana. This is what this is who they worship. This is who they are still worshiping today in the Christian church. That's why they dress the way they dress, always showing their cleavage out. They worship this demon right here. Okay. Now read that again. First Timothy two verse nine. First book of Timothy chapter two verse nine. Come on. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. They must adorn themselves in modest apparel. Modest apparel talk about what? Long dresses that cover them that does not show the shape of their body, nor their TV showing and all that. No, 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 no tight fitting dresses. That's of the devil. You understand? With? With shamefulness and sobriety. Mm -hmm. Not with bloated hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Because this is what they were putting forward. They will wear skinky, skimpy dresses coming to church. You understand? And guess what? They did not have shame. They would now, they would deck themselves. They put makeup on. They put, they will decorate themselves. You understand? Because the man was worshipping them. That's why nobody told them nothing until the Apostle Paul showed up on the scene and messed everything up. You understand? Give me that in Ezekiel. No, Jeremiah. Is it Ezekiel? I think it's Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30. They will wear Greek togas showing their cleavage off and all that. And this is what they will do furthermore. Jeremiah 4, verse 30. Watch this. Read that. The book of Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30. Go ahead. And when thou art spoiled, mm -hmm. what would thou do? Because the women were spoiled. They were spoiled with the philosophies of the Greeks. All that, give me that in Colossians 2, verse 8. The women were spoiled with, by the philosophies of the Greek. Okay. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8. Read. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Mm -hmm. After the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not of the Christ. Because the rudiments of the world that the women were worshipping back then, were following back then, was the Greek custom. Greek culture, you understand, and Roman culture. So today they follow what? They follow American and European culture, which is the same people of the Greeks and of the Romans. You understand? Go back to where was that? Jeremiah 4, verse 30 again. Oh, Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30. Read. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Mm -hmm. Though thou clothed thyself with crimson, Though thou clothed thyself with crimson, because they were decking themselves wearing skimpy dresses, go ahead. Though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold. You see that thing? That's what the Apostle Paul was addressing. So that was the only thing they cared about, how they looked on the inside, but they did not profess godliness. You understand? They were kissing the men out. They were speaking over them. They were disrespecting the men. They did not reverence the men of the Most High God. And the men also, they was weak. They did not check the women. Go ahead. Though thou rentest thy face with painting. Because they were good, but they were throwing them, they were throwing makeup on. You understand? Look, you know, they were taking themselves out as though they are going to the club, but they were going to the house of the Lord. The temple of the great goddess Diana, the Christian church. Read. In vain shalt thou make thyself fair. You see that thing? In vain they made themselves fair. It was not for the Lord because the Most High God don't agree with that. He does not condone that. That's out of order according to God. So in vain they make themselves beautiful in vain. Read. Thy lovers will despise thee. Mm -hmm. They will seek thy life. Thy, thy lovers, meaning the, the men, because the men then, what would they do? They will compliment you and not really because you have a low self-esteem, you put too much makeup on, you think you are, everything about you is about how you look. Guess what? They seek your life. They want to sleep with you. You understand? So there was a lot of evil that was going on in the church. You understand? Hormongering, homosexuality, fornication, disrespect. The church was out of order. Okay? So go back. First Timothy 2 verse 9 again. First book of Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. Wait. In like manner also, the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Come on. With shame faceness and sobriety, mm -hmm. not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me the apostle Peter does the same thing. First Peter 3. 
he addressed the same thing. First Peter chapter 3 and verse, verse 3. Watch this. First book of Peter chapter 3 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of plating because, the head. Or plating the head because that's what they care about. They put long wigs on, wanting to look like white women of the Greeks and the Romans. Today they want to look like Europeans and Americans. Go ahead. And of wearing of gold. That's what they care about, just on the outside. You understand, read? Or of putting on of apparel. Or of putting on of apparel. How did they dress? They dressed like the Greeks, putting Greek togas on. Today, they, it's, it's still Greek togas, dresses that show their cleavage on, mini skirts and all, mini skirts and all that. Guess what? That all goes back to what? It goes back to Greek culture, Caucasian persuasion, as they call it in the world. Okay, go back to where was that now? First Timothy. First book of Timothy. Come First on. book of Timothy, chapter two, verse nine. Read. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, mm -hmm. with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Because what was going on is that go back to First Timothy three verse five now again. First book of Timothy, chapter three verse five. Mm -hmm. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? You see that thing? If a man know not how to rule his own house, so the apostle Paul was telling Timothy to teach the leaders the lesson, make sure you rule your own house the right way. You understand? Set your house in order. Make sure your wife submits. Make sure your wife knows the scriptures. Make sure your wife, she sets the right example for the children and for the young girls in the congregation. That's what the Apostle Paul was telling Timothy to tell them. Why? Because what was the women doing? Go back up. First Timothy chapter 2. Read verse 10. First book of Timothy chapter 2 verse 10. Mm -hmm. But which becometh woman professing godliness with good works. The, the black woman was not the Israelite woman. She was not professing godliness with good works. What was she doing? She was coming to church wearing mini skirts, bum shorts. Showing her cleavage, wearing long nails, looking like an eagle. You understand? I don't know how she wipes herself when she goes to the bathroom. You can't make this up. Go ahead. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Because the black woman was not learning in silence. They were not submissive to their husband. They were not submissive to the leadership in the church. That's why the apostle Paul addressed this thing. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. Meaning what? When the Bible is coming out, instruction going out, they must be quiet, learn, be silent and submissive. Read. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Because what was the women doing in the church of Ephesus? They were teaching. Women were in the front teaching the men in the congregation. So he told them, no, that's out of order because it's against God's law. The same thing he addressed here in the church of Ephesus, he addressed in the church of Corinth. Because Corinth also, they got it twisted. They were confused. Read. Nor to usurp authority over the man, mm -hmm. but to be in silence. You see that? But to be in silence. To learn in silence. Go ahead. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. You see what he's telling them? Listen, Adam was created first, then came Eve. So guess what? The man is the head. The woman must submit to the man. The women in the church of, of, of Ephesus, they got that confused. That's why, that's why the women today in the Christian church, the great, the temple of the great goddess Diana, they use Ephesians 5 21 to say what? The black men must also submit to them. Because it's not a new thing. They were doing it, they were doing it back then at the church of Ephesus. They are still doing it today. Misusing and misquoting scriptures for their own benefit. Because why? They are the daughters of Vashti the queen. They are the daughters of Jezebel. They are not the daughters of Sarah. They are the daughters of Vashti the queen. They are the daughters of Jezebel, the wife of Ahab. Now read that again. The first book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 13. Read. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Come on. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. You see that thing? But the woman being deceived was in the transgression okay adam was not deceived the woman was 
because he envied the devil. Okay. Now go back to First Timothy three, read verse five again. First book of Timothy chapter three, verse five. Mm -hmm. For if a man know not how to his own house, how shall he take care of the church of how, God? How shall he take care of the church of God? So now, because there was a problem in the church, the black woman was confused. The black man was confused. He did not know his rightful place. Get that in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. We need to read this all the time. Because why? Because we are living in the times of feminism and womanists and women and feminists. Okay? Read that, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. Read. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Mm -hmm. And the head of the woman is the man. Go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. You see that? The head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. This is God's divine order. That's how we set the church in order, the houses in order. From the house, the church that begins in your house to the congregation. That's what the Lord is saying right there. And the men and the women, they got this confused. The man was weak. They do not want to set the rule in their own houses. Guess what? The woman became powerful because why? The man was weak. That's what you are seeing today. That's what you are seeing today in the Christian church. You see a lot of simps and Jezebels in the Christian church. You understand? And this thing is slowly, is slowly slipping into Islam. You cannot make this up. Okay? Jump down to verse 8, verse 7. First book of Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Mm -hmm. For as much as he is the image and glory of God. Pray. But the woman is the glory of the man. You see that thing? The man is made in the image and to glorify the most high. But the woman is to glorify the man. The black man. The black woman was created to glorify the black man. Understand that thing. Go ahead. For the man is not of the woman. The man is not of the woman. Read. But the woman of the man. Because she comes from us. Of man. Read. Neither was the man created for the woman. Mm. But the woman for the man. You see that thing? Neither was the man created for the woman. The man was not created for the woman. But the woman was created for the man. The woman was created to glorify the man. The man was created to glorify the most high God. Christ was created to glorify. The man was created to glorify Christ. And Christ was created to glorify the most high God. That's the order. You understand? We report up. The women report to us. There's no way about it. Jump down. What is the woman's glory? Read verse 15. That's why during the during in the church of Ephesus, the apostle Paul had to address it. The apostle Peter had to address it because they were focusing on their hair. The makeup, the skimpy dress, how they look and all that. To take the selfie, to take the Instagram, to take the Instagram models and all of that. That's what they glorify. Read that. Verse 11. First book of Corinthians chapter 11, verse 11. Verse 15. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. But if a woman have long hair, it is, it is a glory to her. Go ahead. For her hair is given her for a covering. You see that thing? So it says, for if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. So what is a woman's glory? Her hair. It says, for her hair is given for a covering, a covering of beauty. That's why they are always into their hair. They are always into this outward stuff. You understand? We are more spiritual. The sisters are vain and carnal. It is what it is. I didn't make this up. Okay, now, watch this. Go back. Give me, give me, give me Ephesians now. Give me Ephesians 5. Go back to Ephesians. So what was going on is that, what was going on in the church is that because the black man was confused about his role, the black woman was confused about her role, guess what? It caused a lot of problems in the, in the church. The apostle Paul had to address this. Ephesians 5 verse 22. The next verse explains that. Watch this. The book of Ephesians of the 5 verse 22. Come on. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So now, you know what? Hmm. Do I actually want to go that now? Go there now? Yeah, I'm going to go there. You understand? Be you know what? 
Yeah, I'm gonna go there. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Read verse 22 again. Watch it. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 22. Come on. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Now we see that it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Why? Because for the wife to submit themselves to their own husbands as unto the Lord, the husband must set the house in order. The man must set his house in order and set his wife in order and his children. You understand? When the wife is in order, the man is in order, guess what? The congregation will be in order because why? The church begins in your house. Once you have your wife in order, you are in order, the children are in order, then you start the congregation. Then the congregation, you set the congregation in order, just like as you set your house in order. But because the house was out of order, the congregation was out of order. Watch this. Hmm. Give me, go back to 1 Timothy 3. I'm going to show you something this day. 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 5. Go back there. First book of Timothy chapter 3 verse 5. Come on. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, mm -hmm. how shall he take care of the church of God? How shall he take care of the church of God? So the church of God was out of order. You understand? Because the men did not know how to set the house, their houses in order. Therefore, they did not know how to set the church in order. Now, everybody was done confused. Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews, okay? Give me Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. You know what? Ephesians 5, verse 20. Ephesians 5, verse 20. Verse 21. Ephesians 5, verse 21. Because I want to show you what it means when it says, submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. Now we get into the meat of it. I wanted to go all around the world to show you the point of this verse right here. This, this verse is loaded, okay? Read verse 21. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21. Read. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Remember, for the church to be in order, the men must be in order with their with and the wives must be in order, the children must be in order in their own houses. Then they'll be able to set the church in order. So both of those situations was not being, those of those, the house and the church, they were not in order. And the church was a reflection of their house. You understand? Watch this. Hebrews 13 verse 17. When it says, submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God, this is what it's talking about. It's talking about the congregation, right? But the congregation must be in order. The men are, are the leaders, the congregation, they will submit themselves to the leadership. Read that. Hebrews 13, start of verse 7. Hebrews 13, verse 7. Okay, watch this. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 7. Come on. Remember them which have the rule over you. You see that? Remember them which have the rule over you. That's the leaders of the church. Read. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. Because when you are right here, you were not taught what I think. You were taught the word of God as it is written. Go ahead. Whose faith follow. It says follow our faith. Come on. Considering the end of their conversation. Considering the end of our conversation. Hold this. Give me that in track 8. Okay. Ecclesiastical. Track chapter 8. Read verse 8. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 8 verse 8. Mm-hmm. Despise not the discourse of the wise, Ray. but acquaint thyself with their proverbs. You see that thing? Consider the end of their conversation. Read. For of them thou shalt learn instruction. You're going to learn instruction out of the laws of God. Wisdom, experience, come on. And how to serve great men with ease. You see that thing? You're not going to get confused. It's, it's going to be easy for you to serve, to follow instruction. Go ahead. Miss not the discourse of the elders. He says, don't miss the discourse of the elders. Meaning what? They are wise things and they are problems. Come on. For they also learn of their fathers. Mm -hmm. And of them thou shalt learn understanding. Come on. And to give answer as need requires. And give answer as need requires. Meaning they're going to give you answers when you have problems. Now go back to where was that? Hebrews 13 verse 7. Book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 7. Come on. Remember them which have the rule over you. Mm -hmm. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. Whose faith follow. 
considering the end of their conversation. Jump down to verse 17. Watch this. The book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Pray. Obey them that have the rule over you. You see what he's saying? He's repeating the same again. Who is he addressing? He's addressing the congregation. He's addressing the congregation on this wise. He says what? He says, obey them that have the rule over you. Remember them that have the rule over you. It's the same thing. Remember them and obey them. Why? Because they have what? They care for your soul. Read on. And submit yourselves. And do what? And submit yourselves. That's your job. Your job is to submit yourself to those that the Lord has set over you. To guide you. To teach you. To prepare you for the second coming. It says, and submit yourselves. The problem is, some of you, you don't want to submit yourself. Guess what? That's why you always have problems. You're always going through problems all the time. Problems keep repeating themselves over and over because why? You don't want to submit yourself because the problem is who? Yourself. Because you don't examine yourself. You don't follow the counsel that you are given. Go ahead. For they watch for your souls. Because we watch for your soul. Come on. As they that must give account. We must give account of you. Read. That they may do it with joy. We must do it with joy when we pray to the Lord for you. Read. And not with grief. And not with grief. When real rain comes up, we don't want to be sighing. Go ahead. For that is unprofitable for you. Because that is unprofitable for you. Give me first Peter chapter 5 and 5. First book of Peter, chapter 5, is 5. Come on. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. You see what the Bible is saying? So when it says submitting yourself one to another, it's talking about what? The order that is set up in the church is the chain of command. He's not talking about that the woman, must, the man, the black man must submit himself to the woman. He's not talking about that. He's talking about the congregation must submit themselves to the elders, the leaders of the congregation, because the wife and the children submit themselves to the husband, which is the head of the house. Read. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. You see that thing? All of you be subject one to another according to the chain of command. Because the children... The, 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 the father cannot be subject to the, to the children. That don't make no sense. He talk about according to the proper chain of command. Read. And be clothed with humility. The humility going into humbling down to the laws of God. Read. For God resisteth the proud. Uh -huh. And giveth grace to the humble. The Lord will give grace to the humble. He'll give them a chance to get their minds right. He gives grace to the humble. Okay, that's what we read in right there. Give me the book of Isaiah 9 verse 6. You know what? Hmm. Give me chapter 33 verse 18. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33 verse 18. Come on. Hear me, O ye great men of the people, mm -hmm. and hearken with your ears, ye rulers of the congregation. You see that? The men are the rulers of the congregation. They set the congregation in order because they were able to set their houses in order with their wives and children. You see that? So he's talking about the congregation. They must be in order. So verse 1 through verse 20 in Ephesians 5, he's addressing the congregation that there must be order in the congregation. You understand? Okay? So now, give me, give me the book. Give me the book of Isaiah 1 verse 26. Let me use that. Come on. Book of Isaiah. Chapter 1, verse 26. Go ahead. And I will restore thy judges as at the first. Mm -hmm. And thy counselors as at the beginning. You see that? He says, I'm going to restore thy judges as at the first. And thy counselors as at the beginning. Meaning when? When we came out of Egypt, when Moses set the order at the command of the Most High. Read. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness. The faithful city. You see that thing? So we must be called the city of righteousness when we set ourselves in order. The congregation must be in order. We must understand the chain of command. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay? So now go back to Ephesians 5, verse 21. The 
book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21. Come on. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So what is he making reference to? The congregation. He's not talking about husband and wife here. He's talking about the congregation. You understand? Now, watch this. Read the next verse. Verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Now, after he's done dealing with the congregation, telling the congregation to be set in order, setting the congregation in order, now he's telling the wives to do what? To submit themselves unto their own husbands because they were not doing that. They were not submitting themselves to their own husbands so that the young girls, the young sisters can actually have an example. Give me that in Judith 8.24. The book of Judith, chapter 8, verse 24. Come on. Now, therefore, brethren, let us show an example to our brethren. Mm -hmm. Because their hearts depend on us and really? the sanctuary. Come and on. the sanctuary and the house and the altar rest upon us. You see what he's saying? This is Judy. She says, let us show an example to our brethren. So we must show the sisters. They needed to show example to the young girls by submitting themselves to their own husband. You understand? Watch this. Give me First Peter 3 verse 1 now. Because the women were not submitting themselves to their own husbands in the church of Ephesus. Come on. First book of Peter is chapter 3 verse 1. Come on. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. You see that thing? So the apostle Peter is telling them, listen, you sisters, you must be in subject to your own husband. Subject yourself to your own husband. Why? Because your husband is the head. Your husband is your head. You're not the head of him. He's the head of you. Because why? They were not doing it. You understand? They were not doing that thing. Hold this. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 34. The apostle Paul had to church, the church of, tell the church of Corinth to do the same thing. Read that. Start of verse 33. First book of Corinthians chapter 14 verse 33. Come on. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. You see that? So the most high God is not the author of confusion. Because women are usurping authority over the men in the congregation, it causes confusion. So what example is the young women going to follow when the wives of the leaders of the congregation are out of order? What example is that? You understand? Read. Let your women keep silence in the churches. You see that thing? Because the women were running their mouth. They were teaching the congregation. They were teaching the men, which is out of order. Go ahead. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Mm -hmm. But they are commanded to be under obedience. As also said the Lord. You see that thing? They are not permitted to speak in the congregation. Meaning they are not allowed to teach the congregation. They are not allowed to lead the congregation because they cannot lead the congregation. They cannot lead the men. It's out of order. Go ahead. And if they will learn anything, mm -hmm. Let them ask their husbands at home. You see that thing? If they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. At home. At home. Go ahead. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. For it is a shame for women to use up authority over the men in the church. That's what the Apostle Paul is explaining here. You understand? Because they are commanded to be under obedience as also says the law regarding what? being submissive to their own husband. Let's get it. Get Genesis 3.16. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Come on. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. You see that thing? Her desire must be to her husband. 
and the husband will rule over her according to the laws of God, according to the knowledge of the most high God. You understand? So what we're reading here is it comes back, it, it comes all the way back from Genesis. You understand? Because what was happening in the church of Ephesus, guess what? That spirit of Eve in the garden that the serpent came to Eve, it was what was going on in the church of Ephesus. That's why the apostle Paul had to remind us of what happened in the garden with Adam and Eve. You understand? Or don't make the same mistake that your forefather and foremother did. Especially the foremother, because the foremother, she knew better, but she chose not to. Because she envied the devil. And she wanted to be equal or above her husband, Adam, our forefather. You understand? So now, uh, go back to First Peter 3, verse 1 again. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 1. Mm hmm Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be warned by, your, by the conversation of the wives. So now this goes into when, in, in, in case where the, the husband, she's not fully 100% in the truth yet, you understand like that, but the wife is. So the wife can be by her conversation and her example to win her husband, her husband over by her conversation. Not telling the husband, you understand, know, all up in, a, in his face. Well, you see a lot of these Christian women, they go to church, which is they worship the devil. But guess what? They don't submit themselves to their husband. Because in the Christian church, the temple of the great goddess Diana, they teach them that the husband must submit themselves to them. That's what Treble Dollar teaches. That's what T.D. Jake teaches. That's what Pastor Chris teaches. That's what Mboro teaches. All that matters is garbage. You understand? So now, what we're reading here is that the wives must win their husbands over by their conduct. Submit to your husband. You understand? The adventure, you will be warned by your conversation and your conduct because what? You submit yourself to him and, sh and show him reverence. Okay, go ahead. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. You see that thing? While your husband behold your chaste conversation, meaning you speak to that man with respect and honor and reverence, Coupled with fear of the law, read. Right? Whose adorning there did not be that outward adorning of plating the hair mm -hmm. and of wearing of gold, of putting on of apparel. Because that's what they were focusing on in the church of Ephesus. That's why the apostle Paul had to write Timothy to address them. Read. Right? But let it be the hidden man of the heart. The hidden man of the heart is the spirit of Christ in him. That tells us what to do in terms of what her role in the marriage and the example that she must show to her children and the example that she must show to the young women in the churches also wanting to get married, wanting to learn how to be submissive to a man, how to love their children. Read. In that which is not corruptible, mm -hmm. even the ornament of a meek and quiet mm. spirit. You see that thing? Even the ornament of a meek means submissive. The ornament of a submissive and quiet spirit. You see, men want silence. Men want submission. That's what we're reading here. Silent, submission, silence. Okay? Which is what? Which is in the sight of God of great price. You see that thing? The black man does not want any woman that is always, always up in his face. Who does not know how to respect him? Who don't know how to talk to him? The black men don't want that. We are the new black men. The Israelite men will not tolerate that. We have standards. Just like we're giving you sister standards when you come into this truth. How to increase your value when you come into this truth. Okay, go ahead. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy woman also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. You see that thing? Is it the holy women also of all time who trusted in God? They didn't trust in their degrees that they've got. They didn't trust in the, the money that they, they get. They didn't trust in how they look. No, they trusted in the most high. They didn't trust in their big booty, their big breasts that they can parade on TikTok and Instagram. No, they didn't trust in their big black mouth and their, big, and their black gums. They didn't trust in that. They trusted in the most high God. Read. It says, adorn themselves in what? Adorn themselves 
being in subjection unto their own husband. Because that's where they are very really wise. They adorn themselves being in subjection to their own husband. The way they carry themselves. They had some decorum. They were able to submit themselves to their husband. And guess what? That's what men want. Silent submission, sex, cooperation, and femininity. That's what we want. You understand? Go ahead. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. You see that? Because why? She reverenced him. Or she reverenced her forefather Abraham. Ray. Whose daughters he are. Uh -huh. As long as you do well. As long as you do well according to what we read. From verse 1 down. As long as you do well according to that, you are the daughters of Sarah. But when you start to disrespect your husband, you talk back, you over talk him, you don't you 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 destroy your 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 man's ego. You understand? You don't encourage that man. You are not the daughter of Sarah. You are the daughter of the Vesti, the queen, and Jezebel, the demon. Go ahead. And I'm not afraid with any amazement. You're not gonna be surprised when the scriptures come out regarding how you must conduct yourself because you have a role that you must play. Just like I, as the man, the head of the house. I have a role I must play. You understand? So the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter is addressing that. The Apostle Paul was addressing the role. Because sisters got it twisted. Okay? And the black men during this time, they also got it twisted. Go back to Ephesians 5 now. Verse 23 again. Verse 22 again. The book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24. Verse 22. Come on. The book of Ephesians chapter, two, ch chapter 5, verse 22. Come on. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Read. For the husband is the head of the wife. You see that? He's emphasizing it again. Like we read in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 8 through 9, it says, For the husband is the head of the wife. So if that if, if Ephesians 5 verse 21 meant that the husband must submit himself to the wife, it will contradict what we read in. Read Ephesians 5 verse 21. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21. Mm -hmm. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So if this meant that the husband must submit himself to the wife, it will contradict the Bible. Not only that, it will contradict the next verse and the next verse. Read verse 23 again. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23. Come on. For the husband is the head of the wife, hmm. even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Read. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, as the church is subject, you understand, we are Christ's subject. Go ahead. So let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. You see that thing? So just as the, the, Christ, the, the church is subject unto Christ, the wives must be subject to their own husbands in everything. They, guess what? It will, it will be contradicting verse 21. Obviously, they don't understand verse 21, but they ignore the, the, the next verse over, and the next verse over, and the next verse over. You see that thing? To their own destruction, piece of form, piece of, but they are lining them all wrong. Why? Because they don't want to submit. That's the issue. Okay? Read. Husbands, love your wives. Stop right there. Did it say husbands, submit to your wife? Husbands, love your wives. You see that? It didn't say husband, submit yourself to your wife. It says husbands, love your wife. Go ahead. Even as Christ also loved the church. Mm -hmm. And gave himself for it. Because we protect, we provide, we teach and set our houses in order. That's what we do. Because Christ did that. He died for the church. He fed the church. He took care of the church. That's our job. Read. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That's what we do in our houses. That's how you set your house in order. Now we read in 1 Timothy 3 verse 5, Esther 1 verse 22. Go ahead. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, mm -hmm. not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. 
So now this goes into marriage. Just as Christ will present the church, the 12 tribes of Israel, without fault, without blemish, we also must present our marriages, you understand, without blemish, without fault. Because we will be sanctifying our marriages with the laws of God in the house, just as we will sanctify what? The church. Just as Christ is sanctifying the church. You understand? Go ahead. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Mm. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. You see that? It is, there's no submission of, there's no way, where, there's no, you don't read anywhere where it says the man must submit himself to a woman. You, it's not in the Bible. Go ahead. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, mm -hmm. but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. So that's our job when it comes to what? When it comes to our wives. We must do that. Read. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. You see that thing? Because we are one with him. He's one with us. But Christ don't submit himself to us. Just like as we don't submit ourselves to the woman. The women submit themselves to us. We submit ourselves to the Lord. That's the order. You understand? That's what the Apostle Paul was explaining. That's what the Apostle Peter is playing. You understand? So what we need to understand is that a lot of the times in the Christian church, they misuse and misquote scripture for their own benefit, not to edify and not to glorify the most High God which is in heaven. You understand? Watch this. Um, go ahead. Read verse 31. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother mm -hmm. and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. They too shall be what? And they too shall be one flesh. And they too shall be one flesh. The meaning what? The wife the wife's mind will be according to the husband's mind. Get that in Surah 7. Surah 7, 26. And they too shall be one flesh. Okay? Here's what it means. They too shall be one flesh. Read that. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 26. Come on. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? You see that? Hast thou a wife after your mind? So your wife's mind must be after... The wife's mind must be after your mind. That's how the two of you will be one flesh. You understand? Because she's doing things to please you, you doing things to please the Lord. Read it again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 26. Come on. Has thou a wife after thy mind? Mm -hmm. Forsake her not. But give not thyself over to a light woman. Don't give yourself over to a stupid woman. Watch this. You know when it says, as thou a wife after thy mind? I'll give you an example of that. Get Judith 12, verse 14. Has thou a wife after your mind? Let's get an example of our foremother, whose mind was after her husband's mind. Read that. The book of Judith, chapter 12, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Then said Judith unto him, meaning who the am husband, I now? Meaning the husband. Then said Judith unto her husband, go ahead. Then said Judith unto him, Who am I now that I should gainsay my Lord? Mm -hmm. Surely whatsoever pleaseth him, I will do speedy. Go ahead. And it shall be my joy unto the day of my death. You see that? That's an example of a woman whose mind is after her husband's mind. It says, Whatsoever pleaseth my Lord, whatsoever pleaseth him, it says, I will do speedily. And it shall be my joy unto the day of my death. You see that thing? That's an example of has thou a wife after thy mind? Go back to Surah 7, verse 26. I'm giving an example of what it means. What it means, they two shall be one flesh. Read that. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 26. Come on. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, but give not thyself over to a light woman. You see that? So that's an example of the two of you being one flesh. Her mind is after your mind. You understand? Her job is to please you until the day of her death. And she finds joy doing this. She finds joy in that. Just like our job is to serve the Lord until the day of our death. 
and is our joy doing it. That's the order. You understand? That is the order right there. Now, go back to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. You see that thing? Submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. This is not talking about the husband submitting as himself to the wife. It's talking about the congregation following the chain of command, the leadership, the man being in the front as the head of the nation, the man being in the front as the head of the congregation, you understand? And setting order in the church according to rank, order, and structure. That's all. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about the congregation. It's not talking about husband and wife. Because husband and wife, they have a chain of command. The church also have a chain of command because the church is an extension of the husband and wife. You see that? That's all it means. That's all it means. You understand? Now, go back to, give me now 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Go ahead. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. Okay? So, I'm going to end the class right there. I'm going to end the class right there. Okay? Let's give the Lord a hand for that. All praise to the Lord. All praise. All praise. All praise to the Most High. All praise to the Most High. Let's pray, pray. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, Many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. Okay, the Lord.